in any fast growing, fast moving company that's, that's trying to do something new, we're asking people who jump on board with us. We're selling a dream and selling a vision, um, no matter which stage you are in that in that ride. Uh, but certainly at the you know, 5, 10, 15, 50, 100, 200 person level, um, we're asking people really to ride a roller coaster with us uh, on this journey. And so to me, one of the best things I did as we started our business was I read Ben Horowitz's book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Um, and uh, it's a little scary to do, but I, I believe in radical transparency. And so sales wins and lo losses, not just wins. Uh, churn, reasons for churn. Why are people leaving if they leave? Um, revenue, actual revenue, cost, burn, um, burn rate month over month, right? And so how kind of feel like, how can we not give our folks the data they need to steer the ship and expect the ship to go in the right direction? Welcome to Growth Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Today, we're gonna to talk about why transparency matters. You wanna grow your company. You wanna make sure people are in the know. They have the data and the information they need and strategies to make decisions and move forward. You want them to feel empowered. Well, if in order for them to feel empowered, transparency is a part of that process. So we're gonna talk about why transparency matters with uh, Matthew Marks, CEO of Evocalize. They're on the Inc. 5000. Um, they are sort of a technology play, working with franchise companies to help them improve and align their marketing, make it more effective. Really interesting business. Uh, if you have a franchise in real estate uh, or other areas that they serve, you might want to check out what they're doing. But as far as today's conversation, why transparency matters, we dive into it. I don't let him off easily with this. I keep asking the question because I want to get to the heart of it. It matters to the bottom line. When you have people that are aligned together, they feel like they're connected to the, the work that we're doing and they are aware of the challenges we have. They're able to rally through those challenges. Now, think about that. They're rallying together. Now, if you don't tell them that we have problems, there's no opportunity for the rally. So you want to make sure that you embrace um, the right kind of transparency for your culture. And as a leader, I feel like it's very, very important. My name is Gene Hammett. I'm an executive coach. We do leadership development where we help managers become leaders. And those th two things together, working with executives and managers, helps us create a full uh, solution for companies that are in growth mode. We work with more Inc. 5000 companies than any other leadership development company in the world. And if you want to uh, you know, be a part of our world, you'd like to, to really understand what we're doing, I'd invite you to a special thing that we offer called um, Executive Virtual Conversations. These are um, live in person by Zoom, uh, if you will, but live in the sense that not recorded. Uh, but you get a chance to uh, ask questions or or you know, really um, share some of the things that you know and share your insights around specific topics. We do one per month. If you're curious about what they are, just go to coreelevation.com forward slash virtual conversations, and you can find out when the next one is, what the topic is, and if it's right for you. We hope that you'll sign up and attend because these are really interesting conversations that we have once a month. They're about an hour and there are other executives. So if you're, you are curious, go to coreelevation.com forward slash virtual conversations. Now here's the interview with Matthew. Hey, Matthew, how are you? Hey, Gene, doing great. How are you? I am fantastic. We're going to have a great conversation talking about transparent culture, why that drives growth. Uh, before you do that, tell us about your company, Evocalize. Yeah, thanks, Gene. Thanks for having me on. We're uh, Vocalize. Uh, is a Seattle-based headquartered. I'm in our Austin office today talking with you. Uh, we're about a 50-person uh, company backed by Madrona Venture Group and the National Association of Realtors. We've designed a, a suite of technology tools for franchise systems to, uh, to enable franchisees within that system to uh, market digitally in an automated way uh, that, um, that performs really, really well without having the humans humans interact in the process of marketing. So uh, it allows the franchise system effectively to work together to digitally market as one whole versus a bunch of uh, separate parts. I would imagine that's a big challenge with franchise companies because they want the support. They all want to grow their businesses, but if they all do their own thing, it's probably a nightmare. So I, I would imagine a big part of what you're doing is creating alignment and uni unity across of brand guidelines and, and marketing campaigns. Is that fair to say? 
Yeah, you're. I mean, you're right, Gene. It's even more than that, right? If you they have different ingredients and different goals in a lot, in a lot of ways, right? So a franchisor, the parent group has beautiful creative, you know, beautiful imagery. They have product lists. They have promotional uh, um, initiatives that they want to push, uh, and they want to maintain their brand. Um, and they want to make sure that their franchisees are marketing effectively, right? And the franchisee uh, wants transparency in the, the market development funds that they're spending in marketing. And they want to know where their money's going if they're required to spend it. And then they want control. So they want to grab a hold of it, but they don't have a lot of time. They don't have ex a bunch of marketing expertise. And so, you know, the, the, I think for the first time, uh, we're in an environment with, uh, with generative AI and, and, and automation that technology can bridge that gap and, and serve as kind of the connector uh, between the two of them. I want to dive into why we're here. We we typically talk about leadership and culture and those elements or principles that drive company success. You guys have made the ink list. You're you're you know honored to be one of the fastest growing companies out there. Um, you've talked about transparency before. You've talked about it with your teams. Um, why is transparency? Why does it matter? Yeah, I um I think Gene, you know, in a high growth startup, you talk about the ink list, but in any fast growing, fast moving company that's, that's trying to do something new. We're asking people who jump on board with us. We're selling a dream and selling a vision, um, no matter which stage you are in that, in that ride. Uh, but certainly at the, you know, 5, 10, 15, 50, 100, 200 person level, um, we're asking people really to ride a roller coaster with us. Uh, on this journey. And so to me, one of the best things I did as we started our business was I read Ben Horowitz's book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Um, and uh, it's a little scary to do, but I, I believe in radical transparency. And so sales wins and lo losses, not just wins. Uh, churn, reasons for churn. Why are people leaving if they leave? Um, revenue, actual revenue, cost, burn, um, burn rate month over month, right? And so how kind of feel like how can we not give our folks the data they need to steer the ship and expect the ship to go in the right direction. I love the analogy of we're asking people to ride a roller coaster with us because the ups and downs of smaller companies are just natural. Like it's just a part of what we do. It isn't all smooth sailing as in corporate America kind of just plugging along at, you know, 8% growth a year. Um, but it's a little bit scarier when you're asked to ride a roller coaster and it's in complete darkness versus <laughs> I can kind of see what the drops look like or what the loops look like. And that's that's kind of what you're doing with transparency is letting them see what's what's expected of them. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I think it was Jeff Bezos that, that said this. I'm paraphrasing, but um, talk about like what is stress and work that like to be the leader and be stressed out is again, paraphrasing in his words, a little bit ridiculous because you have control of what happens. Being stressed out and being being someone who works for the company where someone else is setting the direction, that's stressful, especially if you don't know what's going on. And so, um, so yeah, I, I just, uh, I feel like in order to in order to have success, unless you luck out the first time, most businesses need to pivot a little bit, take some swings, right? And so, you know, you need everyone on board and, 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 and go in the same direction and do that. I used to write for Inc. Magazine. I don't anymore because it took a lot of my time out. But my number one article, I still remember to this day, was talking about Ray Dalio and radical transparency. Totally. I don't know. You don't have to read the book, but but the point was he he operated his company and it had success because he really trusted each person in the company with ultimate transparency. And you said the same things uh, related to another book that you've you've read and, and learned from. Um, but I want to ask you again, why does it matter to the bottom line and it being transparency? Well, again, where are we going as a business? What is our charter? It's to generate shareholder value. How do we generate shareholder value? It's we're establishing uh, a product that people want, right? Uh, or a service that people want. We're um, serving our customers in the best way we can. We're communicating the value we're generating to new prospective and existing clients, right? We're, we're course correcting when we're a little bit off along the way. Um, and so I, I just expecting us to drop into any startup and have 100% alignment across the board, have 100% perfect product idea um, to, to anyone listening. I, I applaud you if you had that from day one. We did not. And so we needed we needed everyone to feel like an owner in the business, uh, not just not just me, the founder. We wanted everyone and needed, required everyone to feel like an owner because they're all sensors. 
out there in the market. They're sensing what's going on and they're helping us course correct. And if you, you ignore that, you're blind in a business. Now, Matthew just said something talking about where is the business going? This is a, a, a tool that you want to be able to use. And this is part of transparency is sharing the vision of the company, not just a, um, you know, a verbal account of where the company will be in three years or five years, whatever your time frame is, but literally having different ways to communicate this in your all hands meetings and written format and in different conversations about the vision of the company, what we're creating. Now, when you are transparent about what we're creating, people are able to create strategies, create bridges, create um, places where we can be proactive because you've trusted them enough for that. And so you want to make sure your vision is written and it is clear for everyone on the team. And you use this on a regular basis to make sure people are aligned. And you even have the tough conversations when people are get out of alignment with that, or they don't understand where we're going and can't make the decisions because they're not paying attention to where the business is going. Back to Matthew. I, uh, I've done a lot of research and a lot of these podcast interviews with people just like yourself. And and actually this concept of ownership, the feeling of ownership comes up very often. Why do you feel like it's a, it's a way to operate the business when you have 50 employees and know you're growing as well, but this feeling of ownership isn't easy to do, but when you get it right, everything just seems to connect together in a special way. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. You, but people can be involved in the, the goal setting and the, the course that the company is taking and, and, and know where they're going and they're setting their own direction. They're a hell of a lot more likely to fight for it, right? Like if you come down on high and say, we're going there and I don't care what anyone says, good luck getting people to, um, you know, paddle water out of the boat uh, if it uh, springs a few leaks along the way. As a leader, you've had to, to evolve and, and, and grow. What's an area where you've grown recently that would help us as, as listeners to see how you see leadership today? Well, I think in the spirit of what we just talked about, um, you know, we've had a, you know, in our business, as I just mentioned, we've had, you know, we, as a lot of businesses have, we've had um, challenges, we've had opportunities. Yes, we're a fast growing venture backed business, but uh, you know, until you talk with fellow entrepreneurs, you don't read in the main Inc. article or, or Forbes or any of the main periodicals. You don't, you read about the, the zero to unicorn without any challenge, you know, without a whole lot of challenges, straight linear up and to the right, right? And so the reality is that most businesses don't happen that way. And even those unicorn businesses don't happen that way, typically. You have some, some pivots along the way. And so to me, I think the, the, the culture, uh, that you set up in a business sets itself up to be able to address those challenges. And we've been no different. And, you know, in the early days of our business, we had a, a product that had very lukewarm product market fit. Um, we didn't realize it for a while because we were just charismatic sellers and entrepreneurs. And we were kind of convincing people to, to, to buy without, um, without, the product being perfect, what they're doing. And we're bridging the gap. We were, we were the bridge, right? And, and so, you know, I think you know, we pivoted. I could tell you some lessons and stories around that, around the pivot and, and some of the challenges there. But coming out the other side, the realization was uh, you have to empower people because you can't do it alone. Now, Matthew's talking about the culture to, to really define your business and grow your business. Here's what I want to remind you of. Your people are the most important element of your business success. If you don't have people, you won't have leverage and you're not able to create technology or innovations or services that allow you to serve the, the clients that you're working with and the customers that actually pay the bills. I think the customers are important, but not as important as the employees. Now, think about that for a second. Your employees are the most important aspect of your business because they allow you to create um, value across the, 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 the aspect of the entire business. You want to make sure that you as a leader are intentional about the culture. You are reinforcing the culture. You are hiring people based on core values. There's so many elements to it. My job is to help you know what those key elements are. And if you're curious about any of this stuff, make sure you reach out to us. We'd love to help. Go to coreelevation.com and schedule a call today. Now back to Matthew. Well, it's hard to empower people when there isn't transparency. 
That's a good point. It's it's kind of a again. I, I hate to repeat the same word over and over again, but it's a it's a core foundation of the house, right? It's um, but it's scary. So I I understand. And we weren't super transparent in the early days, not because we didn't want to, but because we were scared that if people saw that we were we had lukewarm product market fit, that they would leave. And I think the reality that we learned was. When people know the challenges, they attack them because they want to they they want to win and they want to want to make it successful when they bought into the vision. I think a lot of leaders resist a radical transparency the way you've described it. The word I would use would be remarkable, uh, but they resist it because they're afraid if they tell the real truth. Right? You talked about churn. You talked about maybe profitability or the the losses of of deals that people might get discouraged or people might um decide okay maybe this isn't the place for me it's a, it's you know this it's going down the the shitter if you will um but i have found that to be very different when you are actually honest with people and say look we've we've hit a tough spot but we are going to be transparent with you because that's what we're going to treat you like adults they rally because of of sharing those negative aspects of of the business. Have you seen that to be uh, the case for you? 100%. I would say even more, there's a side effect that comes along with that, Gene, that, that I love. It's normalizing failure, right? So so mm. to me, one of the biggest problems that I've seen in some of our my prior roles in, in leading high-performing teams and in, in, in fast-growing venture-backed businesses is, and, and the last one we, we uh, took it public, um, is you 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 hire such high performing people in these roles? It's like, it's like it's a, it's a job that attracts someone who's aggressive and wants to go after it, and it's high performing. But the problem with that is you can get some fear of failure that's that, that's in a place, and that that breeds a lack of innovation. And and when you're in our situation, you need innovation. You need the ability to take risks. Otherwise, you never achieve anything great, right? And so um, so to me. Being able to, you don't want to fail every every day at everything, right? But 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 showing the transparency that sometimes things don't work and that's okay. I think it will fight through them and breed the resiliency and a and a and a willingness to take chances in an organization. That's really really important. Well, I'm glad you said the words normalizing failure because I I think a lot of people misunderstand that there is no innovation without us embracing failure and learning from it. Um, I did an interview not too long ago, which I thought was a good way to put this is. Um, we're, we're making new mistakes. <laughs> and oh, every totally. CEO gets that right away. Yep, we don't want to make the same things over and over because that's that's painful. Um, but we're making new mistakes and we're learning from it and, and sharing the feedback across the teams. I would imagine that's a part of you having a transparent culture. Yeah, I mean, look, our whole business concept came out of a failure, right? Like the entire thing was out of a failure. And we were refused to stop. We kept thinking about it and thinking about it because it was a real problem. We tried to build a software product instead of sell, selling one to a franchise system. We tried to hand it right to the small business themselves. And we realized that they didn't have the ingredients they needed for success and it failed miserably. And we said, well, okay, maybe we give up. Well, no, we're, that was one failure on one type of thing, right? How do the, the business problem still exists, right? Complex marketing, digital marketing is hard for these folks. How do we give it to someone that can give it to them in a, in a shape that actually works turnkey without them having to, to do anything? And, and that was our next experiment, which started to succeed and, and grew into what we do today. So yeah, I mean, failures can become your greatest teachers and can become your greatest success stories. We're talking about why transparency matters with you, Matthew. And is there anything else that we've left out that you feel like is important to this conversation? Well, I think, you know, we've talked about it, We've talked about the riskiness and in, in, in telling people about, about the failures and the mistakes that you make, which is, I think, the hardest part of this thing. But you can obviously celebrate your successes, too. Um, I think sometimes entrepreneurs are afraid to, to celebrate their successes. Um, uh, and so, so I think, you know, it's, it's the mix of the two. Um, and, and we talk about in our company, I led off this year actually with, with a saying, talk about a roller coaster, drive the roller coaster. Don't ride on the roller coaster, drive the roller coaster, flatten out the curves and the bumps. The extent, can, Cause you know, a startup going to have bumps. Um, but you, you can, the extent that you know what's coming and you have transparency, you can, you can flatten those out a little bit and give everyone a little bit more stable of a ride along the way. Matthew, I like that concept. I appreciate you being here talking about why transparency matters when you're growing a company. Uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom. 
Gene, thanks so much for having me. It was a really fun talk. Wow, Matthew really brought it there. I am a personal believer that transparency matters. I do this in my personal life, in my business life, and I'm remarkably transparent with my business, with my employees. I may be too transparent sometimes because I don't have the filter of, well, I shouldn't tell them that because I tell them most things in the, inside the business. There are very few things I don't tell my team because I want them to be in the know. I want them to be able to make decisions because they are in the know, and I expect them to do that. They know that. I'm transparent that way. So all that to be said, this is why transparency matters and why it impacts your business. Because when you get people aware of the issues, they're able to rally together around them. And that is really a part of empowering people and giving them a sense of ownership inside the business. All that being said, if you are interested in coaching or interested in leadership development for people around your team, we've got some solutions for you that are really unique and powerful. We work with a lot of fast growth companies. You don't have to be on the Inc. 5000, but that's where we absolutely perform at our highest levels. So if you are curious, make sure you reach out to us uh, at coreelevation.com. Check it out what we've got going on, or you can actually sign up for the virtual conversations that we have. The next one coming up um, is just a few weeks away. As always, be the courage for seniors.